1719 divided by 2300. No, oh, wait. What the heck are you doing, Ed? I'm doing the math, sir. Doing the math? Yes, sir. Why, Ed? It's simple, sir. Jimmy John's can make a sandwich in 25 seconds, right? Right. So during this 30 second commercial, our 2300 Jimmy John stores will make 4719 sandwiches, right? Uh, if you say so. Well, I got to thinking. What would it take to make 5,000 sandwiches in a radio commercial? I don't know. What would it take, Ed? Well, we could speed up our sandwich making system. But that would compromise our famous Jimmy John's quality. Exactly. Then it hit me. Uh oh. We could buy 32 second commercials. 32 second commercials? Yes, sir. In 32 seconds, Jimmy John's will make exactly 5,000 sandwiches. But you can't buy 32 second commercials, Ed. You can't? No. Oh, crap. You are now tuned in to the Butterfly Queen After Dark Radio Show, featuring Ms. Motivator herself, Marsha Sneed Williams. Marsha will focus on your keys to happiness and success in all types of relationships. As an international motivational speaker, life coach, media personality, and queen, Marsha has the insight required to speak directly to the heart of the matter and bring to light what you really want from a relationship and show you the paths to gain it. Butterfly Queen After Dark Radio Show contains adult conversations, so please put the little ones to bed. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And without further ado, we welcome to the mic the Butterfly Queen, Marsha Sneed Williams. Hello, 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 my love. Happy November. This is Marcia Snee Williams, the Butterfly Queen, and I am the host of this amazing Butterfly Queen After Dark show. And I am so very happy that you have decided to spend your night with me. I have an amazing show lined up, and today we will be talking about, well, we're still on a series of love lessons, but tonight we're going to talk about how to get or how to cultivate the love that you want in your life. Yes, I'm going to give you tips, and we're going to have callers call in, and we're going to kind of brainstorm and share and process and come out with some answers for all of you because we all want love in our lives. Love is very, very important. And if you follow me, the Butterfly Queen, on social media, you know I am a helpless romantic. I believe in love. Yep, I believe in that notebook kind of love. I believe in love everlasting, unconditional love. I simply believe in love. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome on this kind of rainy night here in Richmond, Virginia. I have had a wonderful time and I cannot go any further without thanking all of you listeners for wishing me A happy birthday. Yes, the 26th was my birthday, and I had an amazing, amazing time, and I got a lot of shout-outs and hellos and some amazing and beautiful gifts, and I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you all. So tonight on my show, I have none other than the amazing, sexy, my boo, he brings out the cougar in me, Philip Michael Thomas, Jr. Yes, he is the son of the 80s icon, Philip Michael Sr., who was on Miami Vice. Well, yes, Miami Vice fame. If you fame, if you all remember that show, his daddy cute, but young man is cuter. So I can't wait to have him on. He's an accomplished musician. I love his music. And guess what, guys? He wrote a song for the Queen. Yes, and you're going to hear that here tonight live in between our breaks. And you're going to also hear his take and his feelings on, you know, about the subject that I always talk about, love. So um, stay tuned for that. And I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to my sweetie pa, to my honey, to my, my uh, you know, just my, my, my partner in crime, uh, Rachel Santiago, for coming on back and not leaving me hanging this summer. I mean, just this winter. Oh, spring, fall. Mm-hmm. You know what time it is. But anyway, she's here. Rachel, you here? Of course, I'm here, BQ. How you doing tonight? You hear me stumbling and fumbling tonight, girl. I am just so excited because we got Philip Michael okay. Thomas here. And Everybody I can't know wait. there's a glass of wine in your hand, so you, I, you can stumble a little bit. I haven't okay. started the wine yet. I really, really haven't. I'm just excited, you know, that we're going <laughs> to have the show. And I'm so glad to have you back. I called you my sweetie, my pie, my daughter, and all that kind of stuff just to let people know that, you know, you're my girl. 
You know, girl, yep. so I'm glad to have you back. And last month, we had the sexy and amazingly talented Renaissance man, my oh. dragonfly, Jerome okay. J. Hill Jr. He stood in here for you, girl, and he yeah, walked it out. Yes, yes, I think I fell in love. I did, I did, I did. But he was awesome, and I hope to have him back on more of our shows. And Jerome J. Hill Jr. is the um, he is the, uh, the CEO and the founder of J. Decorum. He's yes. a stylist and all around, you know, just an all around Renaissance man. He does motivational speaking, and he's just a cool guy. So I want to thank him for stepping in last month and. You did a great, great job. I want to thank you, Jay. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. He had the ladies screaming last last month, so (laughs) I'm happy that he did that. And um, so, Rachel, Rachel, um, I need you to help me out here. You know, I've been a little under the weather, but I put on my purple dress today, and I'm sitting here with my crown on, and I'm smelling all good because I want to have a good time with my listeners. I always look forward to the first of every month where I can share my love tips live on the radio. But before we go any further, I want my guests to sit back, relax, yes, remove the sphinx, the tie, and all the things that bind you. Kick your feet up. Up before you do that, go grab your Kool-Aid, your coffee, your tea, or your drink of choice. Your wine is my favorite tonight. And sit back, relax, and enjoy. This show tonight is all about fun, but it's all about learning what it is we need to do to live better, love better, and definitely laugh more. So I want you to have some fun. Call in. Call in 646-652-2512. And press 1 if you want to talk to me, baby, because I do want to hear from you. You can tweet me at butterfly, butterfly underscore queen, no, butterfly one queen on Twitter and Instagram. I want to hear from you. Um, My inbox is full of questions, not just for tonight, but questions about love and romance. And I'm sorry, I may not get to everyone's question, but I'm going to try to pull some and, you know, see what we can do to answer some of your questions. And I want you all, like I said, to call in and talk to me, baby. Now, let's catch up with Rachel. What have you been doing, Rachel? I missed you so much last month, but you left me and you went out and had a great time. And um, I know you've been doing some dating. So let's talk to him and tell him about your date life, darling. Well, first of all, I missed you guys too, but I enjoyed listening to the um, the broadcast last month. You guys were awesome. And, again, I just want to thank Jay for stepping in and let me step out because I really did step out <laughs> last month. And um, I had, a, I don't know, I had a great, great time. And I can't tell everything I did last month. Well, we, we don't everything. want to get kicked off the air. I want you to tell the things that you can share with the audience, kind of how it went, and did you follow the rules and the tips that I've given you? Oh, okay. All right. Well, okay, we can talk about the dating part. Well, I did do some dating, and and more than that, you know, fall is my favorite time of year. You know that. And yeah. I get really, really reflective. And this is a very, very good time and a good season you know, it's out with the old and in with the new. And I spend a lot of time self-searching and really figuring out what I want in so many areas of my life. And, of course, that would include my dating life. Right. So, um, you know, I was I was kind of seeing this man. You know who I'm talking about, right? You know, yes, I do. Don't say I his name. Seeing, yes, don't say his name. Oh, please, please. Um, I was kind of seeing dude, and I was really, really feeling dude a lot. And then there were some things that I really wasn't feeling about, dude. And, and, and of course, there were some things that he I don't think he was really feeling about me. And then I came to this revelation place in my life. Mm-hmm. And this, I'm hoping that we'll talk about this tonight, that everything that you want, everything that you think you want, is not necessarily something that's good for you, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. I've said that on the show before, but it's, it's so hard to distinguish that sometimes. But go ahead, finish. I don't want to cut you off. Oh, okay, all right. Because I was really, I was really feeling you, and was really feeling me. But the more he was himself, and the more I was feeling uh, being myself, I think that we came to a place where we are can make better friends and maybe mm. even better business um, associates, you know. Cause you okay, I have a question for you regarding okay. that, but guess okay. who's here? You know I've got to let the men come in. Philip okay. Michael Thomas, Jr. is here, 
And I want to bring him in because he knows us very, very well. And he kind of hangs he kind of hangs out at peaceful place with us sometimes, and he knows all about our love life and our love woes because you know, we're friends like that. So, uh-huh, Phil, uh-huh. can you come on in, hey. baby? Oh, hey, baby, hey, I haven't heard your voice. Oh, hi, baby, how are you? I'm good. How are y'all doing? It's good to be here. I am hey, absolutely baby. wonderful. I'm wonderful. I miss you so much. Oh my! I miss baby. y'all too, man. For real, it's been too long. Well, you know, I, I have been following you, and you, right you always spoil me. Peaceful place. Yes, peaceful place. We need you back here at peaceful place. Uh, for those of you listeners know, my home, we call it peaceful place. And Phil used to be a regular, so he has to come back and hang out with the queen. He definitely brings out the cougar in me. You know I love you, Phil, <laughs> right, baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I, I am know. so happy to have you here. And um, Phil. Tell me what you've been up to, darling. No, no, no. Before we go, we got to finish listening to it, Rachel. So I was going to say, Rachel, talk I about mean, I'm stuff. going in. I was like, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to get all that personal information. I feel you, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, you know, like, hey, we out you here. know, I'm going to tell you, my popularity is probably your fault, Phil, because uh-huh. I don't know if um, BQ mentioned it on the air or not, but, you know, you kind of made us these – Cougar video stars on your new video. Oh, yes, he yeah. did. Yes, he did. Rachel Zafiaf and I are in your newest video. I feel so flattered. You could have let me put some lipstick on, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, we we was just capturing the moment. It was all good. Beautiful, raw, you know, live and uncut. <laughs> it was. And so now I'm just like, you know, popular with that young, sexy crowd. And you know I like that, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me back her up a little bit. All right, so let's go back to your day real quick so we can move on with the show. And we have callers already on on the line, so we don't want to lose our callers. So please, Rachel, finish with your dating and uh, let me know how it's been going. Well, this is what I wanted to say. I ha- I have been keeping my three in rotation, and actually, I kind of snuck in. I didn't tell you, I snuck in four in rotation for a minute, and that was oh, probably boy. why I had an iron deficiency in October because I was like <laughs> dating my butt off, and uh, so I, I have to come down to three. I have to come down to three. But this is what I learned about myself, and I think this is very important. I realized that the, the sometimes the roadblocks that I have in my relationships. It's not necessarily just something that I do wrong, and it's not something necessarily that dude does wrong. I might be attracted to a kind of dude that is not the best kind of guy for me. Does well, you know, Rachel, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that does happen. We find excitement in people who are opposite us or who present who bring things into our lives that we may not normally experience. So that's that's not uncommon. So do you think that's what your issue was, maybe? I think so. I think so, you know, because I, I like to think of myself as being an alpha female. And a okay. lot of times being an alpha female, I'm attracted to that really testosterone-driven alpha male. Right. But right. I'm not sure if that's the best fit for me because, um, you know, the, the, those are two people who take up a lot of airspace, a lot of energy. And there's not, sometimes I'm thinking there's not enough room in there, enough air for us both to breathe at the same time. Well, we can talk about that soon. I mean, you know, a little bit later in the show, but you're right. And I'm I'm glad that you had a great time. And for those of you mm-hmm. who don't know, out in our radio land and our listenership, Rachel is single. And Rachel has taken on a challenge since last November to do what I call circular dating, which is a mm-hmm. technique that was introduced to me by Tatia D. And that is where women... We, instead of really focusing on just, you know, overwhelming one man, we kind of build up a rotation of of different male friends. It does not mean that you're dating each man in the sense of a romantic uh, uh, opportunity. You're not intimate with any more than one man at a time, but you are filling your space with that testosterone and with that with men who kind of excite your life. And I always say that you know the queen is kind of extra. I like a lot of attention. I am I have I'm high energy. I don't sleep very very much, and I don't want to necessarily ruin a relationship by wearing a person out, a man out. And you can do this even if you're married, baby. It has nothing to do totally with romance, but it has to do with really 
living a fulfilled life, getting what it is you need, leaning back, allowing what it is that you want to come to you without overwhelming a man. Now, how many men women meet a man, they enjoy him, oh, my God, he's the one you call him 100 million times, you text him to death, or you just, you're just sad when you're not around. I mean, that's going to happen anyway. But when you fill your life with other interests, other people who can kind of satisfy that issue, the other men, I don't care if it's your son, your nephew, uh, a business partner, you do that, it kind of balances out that neediness that we kind of, you know, we emotional beings tend to uh, generate. So moving forward, Philip, I want you to chime on in because you know, Rachel, and I can talk about love all day and all night. So what have you been doing, my sweetheart, my darling? all good. Hey, I like hearing y'all suspecting what y'all going through because honestly it teaches me a lot, you know what I'm saying? I, I do feel like being around women of such um, poise and beauty and grace like yourselves, it allows me to be kind of smooth and cool when it comes to me dealing oh, with my relationship. Wow. I like so, that. Know, hey, but you have to start with the most important question first. You forgot yeah. the most important question. Okay, Phil, What's you ready? That? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the first of the most five the most important questions I'll ask tonight. This is number one. Okay, you ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Boxers or briefs, baby? Uh, boxer briefs. <laughs> Ooh, you know <laughs> what? <laughs> they fit <they> better. <laughs> I, you, you, everything you cry in boxer briefs. <laughs> oh, girl, this is a wonderful thing. You know what it is? <laughs> what so, is it, baby? You know, box- Boxer briefs, they you know they, it's like you don't get jumbled up in your pants. You know what I'm saying? You were boxing. Boxers are cool because you can let loose. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, and just <laughs> just be kind of free. But boxer briefs, you know, like when you're walking around and um, you know they, they can get kind of jumbled up sometimes. Boxers. So they, boxers thank you, Phil. So you know, uh, baby, wait, wait. I, let me let me, let me stop you, Phil, because you know Rachel's making a lot of noise. I, I listen. <laughs> you're innocent. You're innocent. You're answering the question, and she's just fantasizing here. And I know her, so let me back you up. Rachel, back up. Uh, we have a caller. We have a caller, and I don't want to keep my callers waiting, so I want to bring in our caller and say hello, baby. Come on in and How are you? introduce yourself. Hi, who am I speaking to? Uh, you're speaking to Frank Brown Jr. Hi, Frank Brown Jr. How are you? Thanks for I'm calling the Black Queen After Dark show. So what's going on with you? You know, I, I was doing my Periscope last night, and you know, I, I guess you were on, and so. Somebody told me to call into this show. They gave me Ooh, a number. Oh, I was flirting with you last night on Periscope. <laughs> and uh, and I, I dialed, and I'm here. Well, Mr. Ooh. Frank Brown, I remember you from last night. You were talking about chivalry. Am I correct? Uh, you're correct. That's right. You were talking about chivalry. You're chivalry. You know, I follow social media, and I'm you know, on my phone, my laptop all the time, and I'm just beginning to do Paris. And my show focuses on love, sex, and relationships. And I always find it exciting when I find a handsome man of color talking about being chivalrous. And that was your take last night. So could you share with me in one minute what it is you were talking about and the challenge that you gave to the listeners? Definitely. So first of all, I appreciate the kind words. Um, last night I had a revelation. It was November 1st that, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's November or otherwise named Movember. And so as long as we're focusing on uh, the the awareness of men, I thought to myself, you know, somebody brought it up to me. They said, you know, all these, all these life coaches, they talk to women all the time, women, women, women. But who's talking to our guys? Who's trying to instill, our, instill leadership in our guys and uh, bring back chivalry and do things like that? So for the next 30 days, I'm calling it 30 Days of Man, um, I'm, I'm devoting everything that I post, everything that I think about, uh, everything that I say to building up my, my kings out here to prepare them for for my queens. I, I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, I'm, I'm trying to build up my, my guys, build up my men to be it men. It definitely again. makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. And, I, that's, and that's what about. turned me on last night about your your um, your um video post was that, you know, you were talking about, you know, really, you know, calling, doing a call up to action for men to you know, become chivalrous. And I want to match that challenge with you to do a call to action to our queens out there, to lean back, learn to appreciate, and receive what these men want to offer us or have to offer us without any conditions and worrying about what kind of car he rides, what kind of bank account he has, or, you know, uh, all this we put into looks 
and we're still not getting what we want. So I want us to learn to lean back and receive and be thankful that there are kings like you, uh, King Frank Brown, out there calling for our men to be better for us. Of course. I appreciate so the they, support. We're going well, to make this down. We're going to move. Well, wonderful. That's we're awesome, We're together. Thank you. Yeah. And, Rachel, it, Frank Brown is young, and he is very handsome. So you, you might have heard me through, thinking um, over here. Was I thinking that loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to follow you. Frank, if she follows you too hard, just call me and I'll cut her off. But she is <laughs> a, a, an amazing queen. She's beautiful. She's uh, just just, uh, just an awesome, awesome person. And she likes them young, so be careful. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Frank. I'll be, I'll be careful. So sexy. Sexy. So, Michael, so if you want to say Yo, something Frank, to what's your, okay. um I want to say, what's your um, what's your like your Instagram and everything, man? How like can we keep in contact and see what you've been, what you're gonna be posting for the next thirty days? Everything across the board is Frank Amazon Mary Brown Jr. Instagram, Frank Facebook, Amazon. Twitter, Frank Mary Amazon Mary Brown Jr. Okay. Okay. Dope, Frank, man. I want that's, you to follow that's the dope thing you're doing for the fellas, bro. Well, thanks for I'm calling the Butterfly Queen After Dark show. I wanted to have you live on the air. I promise you I would last night. And I want you to follow me on Facebook and uh, Butterfly One Queen on um, Instagram. And we can make this happen together, baby. Definitely. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Bye, Frank. Call me. Yeah, I'm not perusing social media, picking up men. <laughs> no, I was really, <laughs> no, I really was just struck by, you know, what he said. Um, he kind of hit me up, and I you know, watched his periscope. And it was really, you know, I, when anyone calls for our kings to do something powerful and something out of the norm that really is going to benefit we as queens, I, I really, you know, kind of pay attention to that. And what he was talking about was really, you know, men, you know, going back to the time of being chivalrous, and I have to, in turn, call for our queens to go back to a time or learn about a time in which, you know, we learn to receive and accept and appreciate the kings in our lives a little bit more and much more, actually much more. So, Phil, I want to say we back into you um, really quickly. What have you been doing? I miss you here at Peaceful Place. Um, you know, Rachel, I already got into your draws. Now, I, I, I'm more interested, sweetheart, in your mind and your heart. How have you been doing? <laughs> figuratively. Figuratively. Uh, Figur- yeah, figuratively, yes. Yeah, figuratively. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you miss us, don't you, Bill? Right. I do, honestly, seriously. I miss the food, too. That good old soul food. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to cook for your baby. Yo, seriously, throwing down. Um, nah, I missed that in my life. I ain't been doing good because I ain't been that in my life. But um, nah, real talk though. Um, yes. You know, I, it's it's been a journey, man. Honestly, like especially where I'm right at this time in my life. So um, I actually I just I just um I've been doing some traveling. Um, you know, and I feel like I've kind of been like a little all over the place, like spreading myself thin. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, you know, we're making, uh, at the same time, making different things happen in different places. Right. Like Cause we've been, um, we've been working with different producers to get this, this album done. I'm working on a new album in my, my vice project. And, right. um, you know, so it's, it's been, it, that's been, it's been, it's been, uh, an experience learning a lot, you know, um, meeting with new people and everything. So now I've, I've kind of settled down. Um, I just got back to Atlanta, Georgia, um, a few weeks ago. So right, right. I've been here. I've been here really trying to get everything just settled and, and together to really focus on making it like um, right. you know one well, big old ball of gumbo. Right. Um, the music business ain't easy. Well, actually, the entertainment world, media is not easy. But you are definitely doing it. And you know, I, I have. From the moment we met, I became a fan oh, of so your music and just a fan of you as a person and a human being. And I stated earlier that you are the son of Philip Michael Thomas Sr., who was uh, Ricardo Tubbs on my Annie Vice. And yeah. He did. He's cute, but you're cute, and boo boo. You're cute, and I get to kiss you up close, and you have to stay at my house, and I get to cook for you and love you up, so I know you're a little bit better, but one thing I, one thing I do know about you, Phil, is that we would spend many nights up talking about love, wow. sex, and relationships, 
And yeah. I don't know how we connected. What made us connect, you know, that day so much? You, I, I can't... you, you wearing that that royal color purple. Oh, I remember. I, I remember. I remember seeing you from the stage. On one stage performing, I was singing um my song "Follow," and um and you and you, and the um the man you was with at the time. You know, what I'm saying we ain't gonna call no names or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you were just grooving, and y'all were just chilling. So like, you know, we made like a connection on stage, and back, and then you happened to be, you know, one of the VIP. Backstage, you came there and you was eating and stuff like that, and then we just started talking about um, life and just we got deep real quick, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Good old yeah. food, and um, and it was just like you know love at first sight type vibes to be honest. Yeah, you know? wow. And um, yeah, so you know, and I and I um definitely definitely um appreciate you just in, like instilling wisdom and everything in me from day one, you know? It was really well, cool. We had such a and good I, time. We, I mean, yeah, really we did. did. It's I mean, it's, you know, I meet, I meet a lot of people in my travels. I'm so blessed to have done that, but there are people that you meet that kind of just kind of, you know, you get, you get to connect with. And we, I mean, yeah. we, we had that connect sure. and this respect and adoration for one another. I mean, you valued my coaching, and I yes. was so in love with your music. And um, and then, you know, I had to bring you home and introduce you to my queen sisters. And yeah. uh, we've been friends ever since. And every oh, time you come yeah. to Richmond, we hang out. So I appreciate it. Now, I want to know the good questions. I want to know some deep stuff. Now, we're talking about how to get the love you want in your life. Now, I know right. what I feel that I want to do and must do and need to do, and Rachel mm-hmm. is going to share it too, but we've been talking a lot, and I want to know, since I presented this topic to you, what have mm-hmm. your thoughts been, and how do you plan on, or if you want love in your life, how do you plan on bringing what it is you want into your life? What do you think some of the tips are, or some of the, the things that you would do as a man? You know, it's um, you know, as a man, you definitely got to have a foundation and a focus and a goal, you know, um, and be working towards those goals. Because the thing is that, you know, you can have any, it's it's a lot of pretty women out here, you know, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot that, you know, even want to be around, a lot of nice, fun, you know, you know, loving girls out here. Um, I think it all depends on, you know, what you really want out of life and making sure that both of your life paths, like, are, like, they, they, um, they go hand in hand with each other. Because the thing right. is, like, you know, I'm sure you've been in a relationship or you've been around somebody you first meet. It's great. You know, you're vibing, this, that, and the third. But then you just, you know, over time you find out that you may not have the same ideals, like, of what, you know, you want your life to pan out to be. Or, you know, um, there are times where, especially for, I, I know, women, you know, um, where, um, you know, women, they can <sighs> – how can I say this? I don't want to say I'm not a chauvinist at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm all for women, but, you know, I, I do say know it like you feel it. I, it. I got like a lot of sisters. Kids. I got to say this. I got a lot of sisters. You know this. My, you know, my dad got a whole bunch of kids. So, um, you know, <laughs> but I know there are times where, you know, women, they'll do certain things like trying to, you know, more so please a man that's not that's kind of outside of themselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and we right. do it too. You know, fellas do that too, you know. Um, and so, but, you know, I think, I think that's like kind of like um, – you know, it's it's it, um it's the fear that we have of like being alone sometimes, where you know we get we get that confused for alone being lonely, you know. Right. What I'm saying? Right. And so so we try and do things that are outside of our character, that may be appealing, or quote unquote you know um, attractive to the other person, but it's not really like us and what we really right. want. So you know right. sometimes like we have to really catch ourselves, and I think it's it's not a bad thing to be to really like learn yourself and be with whoever it is you're dating because you know that's how you really weed out you know so that, that's how you weed out a bad situation and that's how I feel like you can gain true friendships you know and I, right right and, and my and question mean, is I mean yeah. I, as a coach yeah. Yeah. I find that um and this is I mean I'm going to be talk, talk to my married women too because it's not about just you know, uh, establishing a relationship or being in a relationship, but how do you keep it hot? How do you make that relationship you want what you want? And you being a single hot? man, you yeah. know, you're on the road. You have a lot of fans. I've been around you. They try to knock me down, but the queen, you grab, you grab the queen's hand and say, no, let her come first. So that's why I fell in love with you. <laughs> but no, you, you, um, you mean, remember that happened? You know, that happened. Yeah, no, we got, yeah, no, I do. <laughs> 
I know. And I just wasn't that short either. But um, hey, you know the, the RVA got some. Hey, y'all got some players out there for real. They they got like some beautiful women game. here in yeah. RVA. Yes, yeah, they, they do. do. No, seriously. Yeah, but I was first that night, and I felt right. I felt special. But anyway, um, no, what I'm saying mm. to you is that yeah. I find as a coach with mm. men. You yeah. know, um, well, even with women, we all put our best foot forward when we begin a right. relationship. You know, right, right. but the real you, I always say the real you comes out. The more you talk, and within 30 days, you're going to experience, you not if it's not all of the real person, but start, you know, a little hint of that person, the real who, they, whoever it is they really are, is going to come out. And you got to pay attention yes. to the signs. you got to pay attention yeah. not just to the red flags, but what they say. What yeah. you do, see, what you do is more yeah. important than what you say. What you do, Amen. how you talk, how you carry yourself, and and that's why I am such an advocate for dating. Uh-huh. Because dating is like your interview. You ever go for that right. really big job and they call you back three, four, or five times? Well, yeah. I think when we connect with people, we need three, four, or five times, you know, to just kind of you know get the true flavor of who they are. And it doesn't mean yeah. that. It's going to be all bad. I mean, I have a lot of bad qualities. I forget stuff. I lose my thought. I mean, I have a lot of things that I do. I'm moody and I'm very emotional sometimes, you know. Yeah. But you will not see that within the first week of knowing me, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I see it in the second week of knowing me. But the thing is, is that slow is sexy. Take your time to you know somebody. It is. Take your time. Take your time. It do is. what I always say. So and until so you yeah. and I, you call me from all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> and you say, Ma, you know, I need to talk. I need to talk. And we talk right. about this all the time. So how do right. you handle it with so many women coming at you? What is it that you want? You know, to be honest, like I really, you know, I, I, um, you know, I'm a big Michael Jackson fan, right? So, um, and you know, and my mama told me from a young age, you know, don't go around playing with young girls' hearts. You feel okay. me? That's that's mm-hmm. real. So I can't. Mm-hmm. So right. Like I, 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 I really do. I really do try and be as honest as possible, just you know, in in, in right. the the lifestyle that I live, and I feel like that's 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 mostly the best way to steer away from like a, a potential bad situation, you know. Right. Man? I want you to hold like, it right there. Yeah. You know, these commercials okay. pick up on us. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. Hold on. You know, on this show, I gotta stop people because I'm missing the, the commercials and everything. I get in trouble. But listen, <laughs> we're gonna go to a commercial break. You hang on to that. And we're going to pick right back up where we left off at. It's time to pay the bills. Have you ever pondered the true meaning of life? Why the world is filled with greed, evil, and corruption? Or if you could truly live forever? The answers to some of these questions are hidden in plain sight and are answered beyond a shadow of a doubt in the new book entitled Wake Up to the World's Best Kept Secrets, Some of the Best Kept Secrets Hidden in Plain Sight. These questions and much more are answered with irrefutable living proof, but more importantly, substantiated with profound biblical scriptural evidence used to support Support these eye-opening truths with a heavy focus on the current state and plight of the so-called African Americans and black descendants of slaves scattered all around the world. This yet-to-be-released book will undoubtedly change his story as you know it. Wake up to the world's best-kept secrets will truly enlighten or re-educate the so-called African Americans and black descendants of slaves scattered all around the world. To read this eye-opening first chapter, please visit Seventh Day Publishing. This is Benita of Off the Vine with Benita and Saracena. Join us every Friday at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on the May We Help You Radio Network. Our show is simple. It is about wine and wine is fun. Listen in and laugh with us. You'll never know. You just may learn something too. So grab your glass, you know that's the rule, and tune in for a most exciting hour. Hey, we're just two girls at work just waiting to warm up. Listen in on Fridays at 3 o'clock, right here on the Maybe Help You Radio Network. Off the Vine with Anita and Tarasina. Something to whine about. If you were designing the perfect dating site, what would you include? A private voice or video chat room? A private photo gallery and profile area? How about matches based on similar interests? And to keep it special, you could add profile blocking, no third-party intervention, spam protection, and even monthly drawings for great prizes and more. 
That's exactly what you'll find at milesapart.dating. Visit milesapart.dating today and get a free one-year membership while they last. That's milesapart.dating. Oh my goodness, Philip Michael wrote that song for the Butterfly Queen, the Queen of Loveland. I love him, I love him, I love him. I don't know if he really wrote it for me, but he told me he did. So I'm going to accept <laughs> that. I can't go forward without thanking Adam and Eve. It's the nation's largest marketing of adult products with millions of satisfied customers in the United States and all over the world. Founded in 1971, Adam and Eve is also one of the oldest names in a rapidly evolving adult industry. To learn more about Adam and Eve and their products, visit our sponsor page on the MWHYRadio.com page. So please, please, please um, do that. And, um, you know, his music just, you know, just floors me. <sighs> so, um, Rachel, are you there, baby? Of course. I'm just thinking about that song and how beautiful it is. He is, um, Philip, you are just so talented. You really do. You know, and the biggest thing, the best thing about Philip, he's always a gentleman. I mean, we have laughed here, had a great time, but he's a gentleman, and he really does not mind sharing his love for women, uh, what he thinks and what he feels. And, you know, he just, he's a real comfortable when it comes to talking about that. So I love having him on the show. And, um, Phil, are you back with me, Donna? Well, he will be back in a moment because mm-hmm. whenever we do breaks, we kind of, um, you know, relax a little bit. So, Rachel, what do you think about the show and what questions do you want to ask? So um, get them ready and give me, tell well, me what you think. Your, your questions are, you know, my questions are always very different from your questions. Your questions are fabulous, but my questions yeah. always come from a very different nature. So, oh, yeah. okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. I think he's back. Let me ask my questions first, and then you can get to see your questions. We don't want to okay. get off the air. We're not quite through with the show, and you know, I love you, ride or die, chick, but you kind of scared me off. All right, I, I, no, I'm so, sorry. yeah, so, you're back, Don. We were, I'm sorry we were talking behind your back, but you know, you, you know, I have to. You have to tell Rachel, you know, I have to talk there. You know that. You know. Right. Nah. So, Phil, <laughs> how would you pick up when you left the office, darling? <laughs> yeah, no, so I think, you know, I think um, the biggest thing really is just honesty um, and being open, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you know, you can either ruin a potential good thing or you can build, like, a real relationship and not just, like, a lover, you know, 
getting freaky deaky type relationship, but a relationship where you can really kind of find out who a person is. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I said, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, babe. No, nah, go ahead. No, finish with your thing. Okay. Okay, I was going to say, you know, um, I think, like, it's funny because, you know, as I'm getting older and, like, um, you know, just kind of growing a little bit um, into more of who I am as a person, um, you know, there's just certain things that, like, you know, like I'm finding out more of, like, my, my likes, my dislikes about certain things. And so it's like when you when you can be or with somebody or talking with somebody who knows their self a lot too, it, it helps you grow as a person, you know what I'm saying? Because, um you know, like if a girl like she won't go for a certain thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and I, I'm I'm a gentleman. I like when I do go out on dates, I do like the, you know, I, I'm that dude. I'm like uh, open doors, pull out chairs, you know, um, walking, holding the the the, uh, the small mm-hmm. of a bag. You know what I'm saying? I'm that dude. You know. That's it. And, um, and so you know, it's good when uh when a woman like can appreciate that and also be like the opposite. Like, okay, uh, you know, a couple months back, I was like this one. I just met this one chick. And, uh, you know, we went out and, you know, I opened the door for her to the car. And then as I'm walking over to the driver's side, she opens my door. And, like, I was oh. like, marry me right now. Oh. You know what I'm saying? No, oh. it really ain't dead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but that was, I thought, you know, I thought that was really dope for her. Like, you know, because it's like she showed appreciation of me doing yeah. it for her. And then she kind of, you know, was able to show that back. So, I mean, little things like that. I really, I think, you know, in the long run, you know, you think about a person, um, right. just, uh, c- consideration well, I, for you and the other person that's, that's involved with them. So, well, I, I think in all relationships, whether you're single, whether you're married, there has right. to be a friendship. There has to be a friendship yeah. established. And Phil, yeah. am I the oldest woman you ever dated? <laughs> no, 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 no. no we never did it, but we you did take me out, and we had a great time. And you are a gentleman. Right. You are truly a gentleman. But I was just teasing. Right. Um, we have a love relationship. We have a friendship, and and yeah. I do honor that and appreciate that. But um, what I was saying was, in getting what you want in a relationship, I often find that it's you know, and it can be difficult sometimes, ladies and kings and queens out there, for people to be on the same page at the same time. You can meet right. that person, and they are the perfect person for you. You know that it would work. You think it would be wonderful, but the timing is off. They may not be ready. Timing. timing. You know, yeah. uh, you may not be ready for that type of commitment, or you're not in a position for that type of commitment. And I think that um, there has to be a position that I will call idle time. And the idling mm-hmm. time is, you know how you have a car, the car is revved yeah. up, ready to go, but sometimes you just have to sit there at that stoplight for a little while. I think yeah. that we need to allow idling time in these connects because you may miss out on your good thing, you know, because you're not ready. So you say, I'm not ready right now, I'm going to let it go, or because you're ready and he's not, I'm ready to go. And that oftentimes is the case with women. Some women yeah. are ready right now. If he loves me, he's going to tell me, he's going to do all these different things, and he may need that idling time. So the butterfly queen has coined this, this uh, position as idling time, just time to let it be. Enjoy yeah, it and yeah. have fun. If you're having fun, continue to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always say it. And when it's not fun, then you may need to go ahead and step off and go. But everything doesn't have to move at rocket ship speed. Yes, yeah. You know, because, um, like I said, oftentimes I see relationships break up because one person's ready, the other one's not, one's not willing to wait. Um, it's now or never, girl, my eggs are getting old, all that kind of stuff. And but, um, yeah. you could be missing out on something absolutely wonderful, and I think we have to give people time to work it out, time to grow, time to get to know you, you get time to get to know them, and what you, and it's not so much whether you, which it's not really always important in relationship what you love about a person, it's yeah. can I live what I don't like about your butt, can I live with all that, that's right. yeah, and yeah, that's what yeah. makes a good marriage, I was in the marriage for 20 years, and it, yeah. after a while I had nothing to do with how much I loved him. How sexy he was, or how he turned me on. This was, can I live with the fact that he won't put the toilet <laughs> feet down? Can I live with the fact that he, you know, he snores Leave a lot? Up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, that's things that we need to think about. But I think we need to allow, yeah. allow idling time. Look, if right. you have a question time, for yeah. Phil, yeah. And if you got a minute, I have a question for Phil because what I hear okay. a lot with, um, um, uh, young, younger people 
especially um, men, they um, tell me they don't really have an opportunity anymore to be a gentleman and to even take a relationship. So mm-hmm. it's, My and son says it's that. females, right, that they, they don't know how to respond to a man when he, um, he wants to be a gentleman and kind of, you know, to put the brakes on the relationship and kind of cruise through it. You, um, do you have any words on that? To, to um. You are a gentleman, but I hear there right, are a lot of young women that don't know how to respond to a gentleman. They don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. You, you know, I have. Um, to be honest, I've I've encountered in situations like that, um, and and it kind of you know what I feel like, especially our generation now, like today with social media and everything, like meeting people is like a totally just new thing. You know, a lot mm. of people, um, you know, they they really thrive on kind of like interacting via social media and that's how like they date mm-hmm. and they try to meet people they connect with and I think you can connect with somebody on social media. I'm not saying that it's not it's impossible. However, um, you know, it kinda gives us that, you know, it, it makes us where we're not really present in the moment in real life. Mm-hmm. You know? Like um I don't know if um if you remember but um when uh like around the time that I was hanging out with y'all I was on a on like a phone hiatus. Where, like, I yes, was, like, yes I remember. I remember yeah. we talked I went like home. a year yeah, I went like a year and a half, like without a phone, and uh, on purpose. You know, I still have my iPad, so I was still like, you know, posting on social media and stuff like that. But as far as just like, you know, being able to just call or text at the drop of a dime and be in that constant contact, um, mm-hmm. I was like, I was able to really like allow myself to kind of just, you know, um, go into like a special place where I was in my head, and so, right. um, you know, but it forced me to remember, like, how it was before, like, oh, I'll just call or text somebody whenever I want to, you know, have a conversation or whatever. So, like, I had to, right. had to plan stuff out. You know, I had um, – it made me do things like, you know, go over to her house to just to say hey or, like, you know, knock yeah. on the door and be like, hey, I'm here. Like, mm. you know, bring, like, you know, some maybe, like, some, some piece or whatever over. Just, like, little small gestures that normally, you know, I guess because like, you, can so you can just it. FaceTime yeah. somebody. Nowadays it's like, oh yeah, we on Facetime. So yeah, I, I had I had my quality time with Bay. We we was on Facetime today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know so it's, it's kind of you know, cool. It what amazes me, sweetheart, is that people really think the social media time is dating. It is yeah, being right. involved with somebody. You know, I mean, I'm in love. Yeah. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I post about being in love, but yeah. for me, in love means physical contact. Um, you know, we have a caller. We have a caller calling in, and I want to bring the caller because I don't want them to wait, but I don't want to lose this, this conversation because you taught okay. me a lot about sexual media. You taught me a lot about sexting and texting, and I want to listen to what we talked about. You taught me a lot about that. So stay tuned for that, but I'm going to ask our caller to come in. Hello, caller. Okay. Yes, yes, Marsh, Marsh. How you doing, Marsh? Hi. Happy Hello, related birthday. Who? Yes, this is Jeff. Hi Jeff, how are you? Welcome good, to I'm Butterfly good. Team Show. Thank you, thank you. I'm so, I'm so much better now. I'm talking to you. I just wanted to say happy, you know, related birthday to you. Thank you so much. Yes, you know, I began to call. I was going to start to call you some time ago, many times, but you know, I didn't want to intrude. It's been a while since we talked. It's been like over ten years. You know, we used to hang out and stuff. Oh shit. You know, and I don't know if you remember, but you know. I took you some places, you know, we was very close friends and stuff. Okay. You know, and I'm deeply, deeply in love with you. <laughs> oh. Oh. No. <laughs> deeply, deeply in love. <laughs> wow. Um, hold up, hold up. What is it, Jeff? Hold up. Yes, this is Jeff. Yes. Can I say a little something, sir? I'm sorry. Yes, please help me. <laughs> so Jeff, hold on, wait. Hold on, Jeff. So, hey, bro, you, you calling... Um, to, to do a love confession tonight, huh? <laughs> that was in your, that was it was in your spirit. That's what hey, that's what's up though. You know how many you said how many years now? It's been over ten years since I talked to you know my queen Marsha. You know, but brother, brother, I just want to talk to my queen right now. Just, <laughs> hey, what you doing to him, ma? What you doing to him? Um, <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh, go ahead, do your thing, man. Let me put myself on. I just want to... hi. <laughs> yes, Marsha, Marsha. You remember we? Um, I took you to the, you know, um, Statue of Liberty. We went up there. We hung out for some time. You know, took you to dinner mm-hmm. in New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I remember. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. How are you? 
I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I just I'm surprised. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I, I watched you, hung, you know, hang out with a lot of different, you know, guys, and I made sure, you know, they didn't, you know, hurt you, especially when I was around, you know, and to see, you know, just I know they wasn't treating you like I would treat you. It kind of bothered me, you know, and I'm looking like, oh, this is this is deep. This is kind of deep, man, you know. And, I, you know, I was hoping that I'd get the chance to, you know, you know, get together with you and treat you like a woman should be treated, you know. Well, wow. <laughs> you think, Joe? <yeah. laughs> well, well, I'm, um, I'm going to suggest that maybe you, you did, maybe you all need to continue this conversation off the air because we don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> well, um, hi, Jeff. How are you? It's been a very, 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 very long time. Yes. And um, yes. I'm I'm just surprised that you called in and that you are listening. A listener of the Butterfly Queen After Dark show. I, I really do, and I remember us um, dating and going out, and I had a good time. I remember your co- your favorite color was purple. Y- yes, it is. It is. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember yeah. your, you know, perfume you used to like to wear, you know, I remember all that. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, I am um, uh, I'm speechless, and I'm flattered. <laughs> Yeah, we're um, gonna see you. We're gonna see you in the back of the studio in about what an hour and ten minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, um, Jeff, um, girl, it's speechless. Uh, thank you very much for calling the Butterfly Queen After Dark show, and um, we are live on the air. So, um, well, um, let's go back to the conversation. <laughs> hey, you know what can I say? Um, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. That's right. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Wow. What did you do? I, I kind of want to. I need some more information about that. <laughs> but like that sounds low key. That sounds low key like a little movie, though. Mm. <laughs> that's a movie. Well, that's a movie right yeah. there. Fifteen years later, Buddy was like, "Hey, so let's talk I'm about." I'm like trying to help about. you, BQ. I didn't want you to get, you know. Uh, the um, hey. ratings to go up or down too high. Hey, <laughs> so. hey. Ma, hey, you got you owe that man. You got to go out to dinner or something with him. Like, let him take you to lunch, get some tea, Starbucks, something, a pumpkin spice ah. latte. Ma, he sound like he just wanna. He just needs to say hello. He needs to just touch the hem of your garment. Like, <laughs> you know all right, let's, let's get back at him. Like, no topic, ladies, and no kings and queens. Let's go back to the show topic, and okay, um. Okay. What were you saying, Phil? Um, you are oh, not no. on this dead air to occur. I um, forgot. No. Please, come on. Let's keep this show moving. We're going to talk about No, we were talking about dating and social yeah, media right, and right. how the romance yeah. has moved. Chivalry. Chivalry and is it's not harder dead. to be social a romantic media. and it's hard to be a gentleman now. All right. Social media. They don't know how to accept being a gentleman and they don't know how to, like, Really reciprocate being, uh, like, yeah, being the lady to the gentleman. It's um, it's it's random. And it's weird in twenty in twenty fifteen. You know, however, I think that um, there's hope. You know, because I mean, there's there's still some people out there. You know, I just feel like social media and phones they they allow us to not be present in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like we're we're exactly. like you know you, you know even you know Ma, like you've been to the shows. You know what I'm saying? Like you know you're at a show. You're the type of person. You're enjoying the show. You know, as other people, they're just filming the show. They're not mm-hmm. enjoying it like they're, but they're gonna go back and look at it later and be like, "Oh, I liked it." But then it's like, you know, you weren't there, present in the moment, just like mm-hmm. feeling what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's caught up in like, "Oh, I gotta capture this moment on my phone." Like I can't let the moment slip by. You know? So, but that's just where we are right now. You know what I'm saying? That like I, we've like even even they were talking about um, babies that you know. Before they're even one years old, they know how to, you know, work cell phones and 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 put in passcodes and all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. Right, yeah. right. That's so, right. I think it takes away. I think I think that social media kind of gives people courage to do things they yeah. would not normally do, and yeah. it allows them to to I guess to take on a persona that is mm-hmm. not them. You know, you can. Yeah. I mean, especially I know for me being butterfly queen, I'm I'm really a regular ordinary girl from Orange, New Jersey. Shout out to Orange, yeah. New Jersey. Uh, and, I'm life, and I know 
that I'm supposed to live loving and, you know, and just embrace love. I mean, I, that's, that's who I really am. If you know me as a person, I believe in love. I believe in romance. I believe in that no book kind of love, you know, but you can't get it through social media. And so you taught me that. We talked about a year ago. You know, I was talking, and I think one of the shows was on sexting and texting. And I'm like, why are these men so into sexting and texting? I mean, if you could see my inbox sometimes, you know, and I know these men that send me pictures of their little, I mean, their little, and sometimes large privates, they would not do that if they were visiting me face to face, you know. And I. I'm a queen, and I want to be treated like a queen. I mean, once I get to know you, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's on. But, you know, I, I really, you know, I really like being treated well. And to me, treating me well is not sending me, you know, pictures of your private or you telling me, you know, there's something really, really good, because um, that's not allowing you to get to know me. And what you right. did say to me, Phil, that I will never, ever forget, you said, Mom, nobody will ever really take somebody out that they're sexing and texting because they've already gotten off. They're done. You know, they right. Are, and it's so easy because of social media to find yourself caught up in a sexting and texting relationship. Yeah, yeah. It really yeah. is. I mean, you get caught up into that. He says beautiful things to you that he's probably getting off of in, uh, the Internet someplace. He's, you know, talking to you and you're, you know, you're bored, you're home sitting there enjoying it. And then, um <laughs> You know, uh, you find that they never ask you out. And Rachel, you had an experience when you were, you know, doing the dating online dating. Yeah, yeah I have, and yeah. not even just the online dating. Um, you know, I've been out here long enough that, you know, um, there were men that I dated before I got married, and then I got mm-hmm. married and divorced. And I'm, you know, I've gone back to renew some of those relationships, and the men that used to. Act, I guess actively date me before, like would call me, ask me out, those kind of things before, don't do that now. They are very content to stay on the phone. They text all day, all night mm. if I let them. Um, mm. And um, I can only, I'm asking you, but I'm, I'm only thinking they've got to have a level of satisfaction in that that maybe I am not seeing. Why would anybody mm. want to stay on the phone with you all the time? That's crazy. Hey. They want because they want to read. They want to know what you're thinking. They want to read. Is that what it is? Well, maybe that. I want to go back to the topic, guys, on on how because you know, we have such a good time on this show and we get all these um, calls that we don't expect and and you know we just kind of hit manage it. Too, but um, I want to get back to how to get the love that you want in your life. I am very much in love right now, and I feel that, you know, I know what I want. I know what yeah. makes me smile. I know what um, it takes to make the butterfly queen happy. And um, for me is, you know, I mean, I'm going to put my all into it. I'm going to go in with two feet. I'm going to give my all. But then at a certain point, you know, I have to lean back and allow it to be received. And I think that's really, really important in getting the love that you want. Not that you want, but more importantly, and to my listeners, my kings and my queens, because it's not just about women. Most of my clients happen to be men. I have, right. I'm very comfortable talking to men. You know, mm. men, I yeah. they just feel comfortable talking to me. And the biggest yeah. thing is, in many women and men, is really learning first. Number one, your first tip on the butterfly queen is to love yourself. Yeah, love yourself. Yeah. And in loving yeah. myself, I was treated to a beautiful massage recently. And, um, you know, I just had to take some time away from, you know, giving attention to other people and just loving me. And I think men are attracted to women who take good care of themselves. Oh, That's definitely. number one. And yeah. women, I know for me as a woman, I love a well-dressed man. I love a man that smells good. I love a man that takes time to pull himself together. It takes time for mm-hmm. himself. I do love that, too. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing in cultivating the love that you want is being able to boldly, queens and kings, boldly state and know what it is you want. What's your ultimate goal? Yeah. And oftentimes we're afraid. And that's how we end up being somebody's boo or somebody's temporary or I really, you know, I'm not even saying, I'm just, you know, I'm just, we just, we just, you know, we just hooking up. And if that's not what you really want, you can't participate in that because that's what you'll be. Yeah. Is the hookup. Yeah. Yeah. 
Rachel, those are my two. I'm going to give three more throughout the show. But, um, Rachel, what do you think? Well, I just know that the world has totally flipped upside down. And, um, you know, I keep coming back to Phil here, who um, I know I'm not supposed to say he's a whole generation younger than I am, but he is, but that's why he's so delicious to me. He knows that. I know. You like your young man. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to say what you have to say, and then we're going to go to a commercial. Mm-hmm. So this is commercial time again. So go ahead and say what you have to say, take a okay. break. But <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, I'll say my, my, my other question to you later. But um, I would like to know what your top three things are that you look for in a woman, the top uh-huh. three things, but you can tell me when we come back. Okay, no doubt. Let's get it. All right. All right. We're going to go to a commercial. And right. I am going to give a ooh, a shout out and a thank you to the AMFM two four seven two four AMFM two forty seven for taking MWHY radio network to a different AM and FM station across the United States. So today I want to thank everyone who is listening in Tampa, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Richmond, Virginia, Greenville, North Carolina, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I also wish to thank all the countries who continue to download our show from iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Windows Xbox, Blog Talk Radio, Facebook, and many other podcast sites. Also, those who are listening to our app, we promise to continue to bring you awesome talk and music programs every single day. So please, please follow the May We Help You Radio Network. So that was our commercial break. And now. Did I you know to- that one in four people in America? live with a mental illness do you have the communication skills to help out if one is in a crisis what if it's your best friend maybe your son or daughter while crisis intervention isn't new the book crisis intervention 101 is it's easy to read includes links to two videos and it's under ten dollars get your copy of crisis intervention 101 today on amazon.com because we all need help in a crisis Sisters Justina and Deborah are proud to announce that their book, Little Ducky Do, Can Little Ducky Tie His Shoes, is now available in print. So grab your copy for children 2 to 7 at littleduckydo.com. That's L-I-T-T-L-E-D-U-C-K-Y-D-O.com. This is the first in the four-book series, so remember to sign up and receive your free coloring page. Get ready for Little Ducky to teach your special one self-confidence, and the power of perseverance through encouragement. Remember to order your copy today, and you'll be glad to see that Little Ducky Do can tie his shoes at littleduckydo.com. Hi, this is rock star entrepreneur and international business consultant Erica A. Murray. Tune in to Simone Elbow, host of Ready for Change Radio on the May We Help You Radio broadcast network. She has the strategies to move you from stuck to successful. And if I were you, I wouldn't dare miss it. Standing on the corner Watching people passing by All alone without a soul, yeah I get out by my side Nobody can see it, see it, see it No one hears it calling my name The difference between him and I Is I don't have the fame Bless 
that not necessarily do you want to or can one person be everything that you want to be. It's overwhelming. It can be overwhelming, and that's why it's important to have other parts of your life that are working in sync with that to make that relationship better. But ever, but never, ever be afraid in any relationship that you're in to say exactly what it is that you want. Absolutely. And let's yeah. talk about that for a minute because I, this is a certitude I have about that. I tell most of my girlfriends, Phil, that men will usually let a woman know what he wants or expects in a relationship within, I don't know, the first three days at least, if not the first <laughs> three minutes. Yeah. They'll let you know. Women, on the other hand, we like we, we kind of hang back. It's like we, we don't really want to let you know what we really want. And then when we do want to tell you, we're all nearly mouthed about it. We, we use too many words. We're afraid uh-huh. to say exactly what we want. Yeah. And if I were a man, I think that's kind of irritating. Mm. <laughs> I think it goes back to it. And I've written, I wrote a piece recently. You know, I, first, I post on social media, and I blog, and I periscope now, and I talked about vulnerability. Everyone's mm-hmm. afraid to be vulnerable. Vulnerable can be looked at as a position of weakness all the time. Mm-hmm. But I think in love, if you truly love somebody, you have to trust enough to be vulnerable, to say exactly yeah. what it is you want. Because I yeah. believe that's the only way you're going to get what you want. And you've got to mm-hmm. pray that that person is going to be honest with you. And women, when they say it, you better believe it. If a man tells mm-hmm. you he does not want you or does not want a relationship or does not want something, then you know you have to believe it. You know, you have mm. to believe. I don't care how pretty you are, how 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 great you throw down in in in, in the private areas, uh, whatever it is you do, you know they're mm. not ready. And and mm. that's why idle time is 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 really important. You know, yeah. being able to sit back, lean back, and let it let it come to you. You know, instead of forcing mm. it. And uh, he didn't commit, or he won't define what it is we're doing. And, I mean, my thing is if you get tired, don't play. You always have that option to stay or to go. Yeah. And in my life, when I've gotten tired, I just leave. I mean, I, I will put my all into it, but if it doesn't work out, then you have to be a big girl enough to, you know, put the big girl panties on and, and say, okay, well, this is not meant to be right now or not meant to be at all. Mm, at all. Wow. That's scary. Isn't that kind of, but doesn't that kind of make you sad a little bit and scared? Of course it does. It makes you sad. It makes you scared, especially when a person really makes you smile and you like right. being around them, but they just may not be ready. And I don't believe that love right. should be forced. I don't right. think it should be forced. And, um, right. you know, it doesn't work like that. And like I said, after being in a marriage for 20 years with ups mm. and downs and ins and outs and, oh, we're, yeah. madly, you know, we're mad passionately in love today and tomorrow you need time to go play on the piano for eight hours and I need you now. You know, you just learn uh, compromise is important. And I, we had Jay Hill Jr. last last a month on the last few months on. He talks about his three C's. You know, mm-hmm. uh, communication. Um, uh, what's the other one? Communication. Consistency. Uh, consistency. Consistency and mm-hmm. compromise. And compromise. And those, right. Yes, mm. those are things that are really really important to women because when you become inconsistent. You know, yeah. we'll be patient with that for a little while. But when you stop to com- stop communicating, that that's the, the worst. And then, you know, then of course the compromise is not there anymore. So, um, you know, he he uh, that's his uh, his he trademarked and copywritten those. So I'm borrowing them from him today. But um, you know, they're really really important. I think when you talk to, I talk to many men about my travels and women as well, and um, I hear the same story over and over. You know, I, I like him. We have a great time together, but he just won't commit or he won't say what it is. Or she, you know, uh, seems to not be that into me. And it's not always, yeah. That's not always the case. That's not always the case. Sometimes people need time. But mm-hmm. I think we all as adults have to be open and honest and say what it is we want and not be afraid. Yeah, And let's true. be real about it. I mean, you, you can ask for what you want. And the and you know the thing that makes us so sheepish about asking is that the other person might not want that, or they say exactly. no, you can't have that, and it does sting at first. It does, mm. Mm. but yeah. um, you know, we like you said, we got to put our big girl panties on or our big boy boxer briefs on. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and be willing to take it and know that, you know, we're walking off of our integrity and our, and our, our time has not been wasted in the wrong relationship. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's all about honesty and being yeah. honest. So and getting what you want, like I said, and, and getting what you want, getting what you want in life, period, not just in your love life, it takes time. Okay. If you want that special career, that home, that yeah. car, you know, it takes time to build yeah. up towards that. But sometimes you can meet that person, especially mm-hmm. in a love relationship, where they just set your soul up on fire. And yes. you yeah, know, true. you know yeah. that you know that you know that this is a good thing for you. You know yeah. that you know yeah. that you know that this is what you want. And yeah. like I said, the timing may not be right, like you said, Rachel, but you stick in it anyway. You hang in it anyway because you know it makes you smile. My thing mm-hmm. is, I don't have a problem with hanging in there. But mm-hmm. when I stop smiling, when you stop making me laugh, you know, when I no longer get the butterflies, then I know that that's always been my 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 cue that it's time to exit when I no longer get the butterflies. When being around you is very difficult, you know, um, I'm I'm begging you for for this and you're not giving that to me, and that means that you don't want to. You know, and that's, that's sometimes the hardest thing. It's like you got to lick your wounds and walk on. But what I say to that is hopefully, and I try to leave any situation I've been in in good terms, if at all possible, and just in good terms. Leave, you, know, you just kind of, sometimes you just got to walk away, and maybe the person will recognize that you are the one, or maybe it just it's just not to be. That's the if by chance. That's always very scary. Yeah. That's right. right. That's exactly right. 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 And I, you know, I don't want to leave my married folks out, you know, because I have been both. And, you know, in a marriage, you know, how do you keep it high? I mean, you're married in a marriage for 20 years. And I remember sometimes looking at my husband at, at the time, you know, and I didn't, I could, I knew I couldn't take his next breath without him. Then the other time, mm. I'm like, if he goes close to the steps, he's going to go down. I'm telling you right now, he's going to go down. <laughs> he's going to go down. Or you go through times where lovemaking is hot and passionate. You just can't get enough of this person. And then you go through those times where you can walk around the room butt naked with a bow on, and they don't seem to notice you. So how do you get that back? You know, what do you do? And, you know, what I always thought was necessary was let's sit down and talk about this. Right, yeah. You know, baby, what's going on with you? Because it's, it's not always about you. And we live in a very narcissistic society where if it, if it doesn't look good to me, it doesn't feel good to me, if it's not satisfying my needs. But in love, it has to be reciprocal. Mm. You know, the, the, yeah. the, the attention, the, the, the um, adoration, the, you know, all of that has to be reciprocal. But I think we have become so narcissistic in not just our marriages, but our relationships and our connect with the world. It's all about us. Yeah. And that does not make for good bedmates. It does not make for good connect. It does not make for building strong families. We will always worry about ourselves. Mm. I like a man who wants to please me. Because mm. I like to please him too. <laughs> but I like hey, a man hey. who wants to please me. That wants to make me smile. Yeah. Yes. Um, but help me out here, guys. <laughs> no, that's real. I mean, you know, and then a lot of times, you know, in life, you know, us going through different situations, we learn what we even like, you know, because, you know, we, we may admire something from afar and then we get up and we experience it and they're like, oh, I ain't like that too much. Or mm-hmm. you know exactly what you don't want. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think that we always try to recreate what we had in the beginning. Right. And, you know, yes. And and and, and it's, it's virtually grow. impossible. Growth is you can do some things that you had that you did in the beginning, but see, I already know what your feet feel like. Mm. Okay, <laughs> I already know. <laughs> I already know some things about you, so it's impossible to recreate what you had in the beginning. But it's mm-hmm. not impossible to take your relationship where it is right now and take it to new heights by be by being willing to try new things. Mm, you know, yeah. By being willing to talk, by being willing to, you know, I mean, introduce some toys into that, into the game. Yeah. Introduce some things that you have not tried. Go places that you have not tried. So you know, it's not always you know trying to hang on to what you had, but make what you have so much better. 
Mm, yeah. And that's a part of, you know, getting what you want in a relationship. Um, we're here talking on the Butterfly Queen After Dark show about love lessons, and um, we are here with Philip Michael Thomas, Jr., and my Rada Dot, your great from Sati Afa, and we're yeah. sharing some of our ideas on, you know, how to get the love that you want in your life. And I want my callers to take a moment, stop texting me and sending me the beautiful tweets that I cannot respond to quickly enough. And talk to me, baby. 646-652-2512. Right. Six, 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 I have a caller saying to me, and it's not going to say on topic, Queen, how do I handle a man who seems to care a lot about me, says he does, but then his actions don't always meet up to what it is he's saying? Mm. Anybody want to answer that one? I could, um, but I'm gonna keep my mouth shut for a minute. Girl. <laughs> you know what? Hey, right, you just you oh, got fired up. All right, you so you're the fire. only you're the only king on this on, the, on this show. Uh, uh, do your thing, Phil. Oh, I know you got some fire. You go ahead. I'm. A, I, you know what? You go ahead, and I'm, a, and I'm a piggyback on what you got to say. How about that? <laughs> okay, I, okay, I, I okay, like okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. This is what I'm gonna say. Go ahead. A man can say what he want, but he got to put some fire behind that. If yeah. he can't put no fire behind that in his actions, girl, you need to walk. Because all that yeah. talk is just that. It's just talk. Yeah. That's what I got yeah. to say. Uh, yeah. You hear that? You hear that, BB? This is Queen B, who uh, hey. me and asked me that question. Uh, Rachel says, you know, yeah. talk is talk, action yeah. speaks louder than words. So if he shows you you know, then then I think that you're, you know, into something really hot. But if it's just talk and you're not feeling it, Queen, Rachel says, walk, walk, walk. Is, is that mm. right? Well, I say mm. that, you know, like I said, I'm going back to what I said. If it's not fun, don't play. I mean, right. everything's not going to be fun all the time. But if I'm with you and you make me smile and I'm laughing and I'm having a good time, I can hang in there. I can I can deal with our ups and downs. But if you are consistently mm. taking away my smile or consistently not showing up when I need you the most, then I have to learn and know that maybe this is not what, it's, what, it, what it could be. Because, you know, you right. can like, you can meet somebody and you might like 40% of them. That means that you're going to spend 40% of the time with them. You right. know, I, you, you you can either choose to date or be with somebody during the times that you are comfortable with them, especially if you're not trying to cultivate a long-term relationship. You just want right. to have a nice time. This person is great for a movie. This person is great for a night home with a glass of wine. You know, that's what you want. But many of us or many people want a relationship. So you're talking mm. about a relationship um, I don't think there's any percentage in this relationship that you need to measure it necessarily. But mm. my barometer has always been if you make me smile yeah. and make me feel wanted, then, I'm, then, I, then I can hang in there a long time. Yeah. So um, that's my thought, darling. And then I have another question. i got to try to read this because it went past me. Um, Philip Michael, what kind of woman do you like? What kind of woman do I like? Um <laughs> <laughs> One is you, you don't have to use my name, baby. Go ahead and just you know, be yourself. <laughs> Rachel, a woman like Rachel, one who's confident, <laughs> knows that she's a queen, knows that um, she deserves only the best. Um, you know, <laughs> I like a woman that you know it, that can that can dress well, but she's not trying to necessarily be like the uh, the girl goes clubbing every weekend and like the little short skirts trying to get everybody's attention, but she likes to keep my attention. Um, and I, I just that attraction to be honest, like uh, there's something special like about um a woman who smells good. You know what I'm saying? Like right. when you can smell it, like when she got that special scent. Like when I first met you, my you remember I was like, dang, you smell like good enough to eat. I was about to you say just making me smile. I'm, but it was real. <laughs> you, I don't know what you be doing and putting on these like little perfumes and stuff, or whatever, but. I was like, yo, um, yeah, um, a scent is very, very, very attractive. Um, and just, you know, good conversation, talking about more than just, like, I guess the surface talk, you know what I'm saying? Um, we talk about vibes and, 
energy and, you know, ideals and yeah. goals. I don't know. But, you know but it's, now you got me blushing and saying it over here. <laughs> I do think it's important for the queen to smell nice, and I'm glad that you know this. Um, I have, um, oh, my, um, we have a caller. I'm going to take this call. And if it don't go too well, we're going to get rid of this call. So let's, um, <laughs> this Maybe another one. Call. Yeah, we, you know, we, oh, no, it's not a call. It's not a call. I'm sorry. Let me see. Oh, it says. Um, this is the CBT. <laughs> oh, my. Well, this is, a, this is a statement, I guess. I'm going to read it because he doesn't want to okay. talk to me. It says, um, let me <laughs> You know, you never know what's going to happen here on the Butterfly Queen After Dark Radio Show. And it's Bubba from the Backwoods. Come on, Bubba. And, um, yeah, Bubba, Bubba from, from the Backwoods. backwoods. I'm scared of Backwoods. I don't like snakes and I don't like dark. But I'm going to um, read what Bubba has said. I'm Bubba from the Backwoods Show. A relationship is like prison. You are there to do time and make it work. Do not fight. Just make it work. Oh, that's mm-hmm. that's words from Bubba from the backwoods. Well, thank you for hey. your statement. I try to read all of the messages that I get, and they just keep coming and coming and coming. So, um, thank you, Bubba, for your um, two cents. So, um, let's go back to um, <laughs> our conversation. But thank you for telling me I smell good. So you know, you just you just don't know. You bring up the cougars in me. <laughs> I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you. You better be glad that I'm in bed. But, um, okay, I'm doing the chat now. Rachel, I'm going to read the chat. You go ahead and continue to talk, and I'm going to try to answer some of these questions because they're coming in. Well, I want you guys to call in, please. You call know, I have different kinds of questions that come across my screen. See, BQ gets all those really, you know, Nice textbook kind of questions, and that's all great. <laughs> but I get questions of a different nature, so I'm going to see if I can word this in a way that um, won't mess up the rating. And yeah, don't get us kicked off the air. Right. We'll yeah. have to pull yeah, the mess up the rating. Okay. So say, for instance, that you were coming out of the shower backwards, and I was seeing you from the back end. Uh-oh. <clears throat> wait, wait, say it again I, now. Right. I'm on, Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Yeah, back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Um, if I was, if I just kind of, you know, had your cute little tush, would it be more likely to have rug burns? <laughs> or would it be more likely that there would be a sunburn? In other words, would you, are you more uh, on the top guy or on a more on the bottom kind of guy. Wow. Oh, my. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to say sorry first, but go ahead. You can answer this, Phil, if you choose to. <laughs> I, you know. Hey, look, okay. It's after 1030. The children are, should be asleep by now. Yeah, okay. the, the children should be asleep, but, you know, we're in 2015. Children sneak and listen and do whatever they want to do when their parents think they sleep. But, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know what? I, it's, it's, it's the vibes, to be honest. Like, I'm very, like, I, I like to please. So, you know, whatever it calls for, whatever, <laughs> let's just get it done. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, listen, hey, I, okay, now. Uh, I mean, but if you have to, oh, no, oh, okay, uh, uh, no, 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 they, they want, oh, these chicks want to answer. Rug burn or sunburn, baby? Which one they're is They're asking him, oh, God. Sunburn. So, rug burn, so, I mean, I do like a rider, though. I'm going to do <laughs> Like, and that's real. That's just real. I like. I do like a rider. You know, if she can um, perform the ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I just like a couple from the backwoods is still sitting next to this. He told me okay. butterflies go away. It's called marriage. Um, I don't know where that came from, but um. Thank you, Bubba. Wait, wait, wait. Did I, did I get my question answered? I don't know. Yeah, we did. We did. I just tried to uh, cool so off the room a minute, but go ahead. He said he likes rug burn. Rug burn. Rug okay, burn is when I'm on. When I let yeah, I let her be on top, right? Okay, yeah. Well, listen, I have is a caller. Burn? I have a caller. That's, um, thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you. Come on. That's okay. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Am I changing the subject? I didn't mean to do that. I'm just trying to get our callers in. We have a we have a caller. Um, I mean, earlier I talked about taking care of ourselves and loving ourselves. 
I'm going to bring her in shortly, Carell Jenkins, and she's going to talk about briefly about what I experienced recently. I don't mean to change the subject. I like it when it's juicy and hot. we got a whole 20 minutes to do that, Rachel, and we can kind of ask questions. I also have some ladies calling in asking, is this Jerome J. Hill Jr.? No, it's not him, but um, hopefully he will call in tonight and help the queen out. Um, this is um, Philip Michael Thomas Jr., musician, um, just a entertainer extraordinaire, and of my sweetheart. So um, that's who you're listening to talk tonight, and he likes um, he likes Rugburn and uh, Sunburn. Uh, based on <laughs> Rachel's question, I mean, I don't to say. Uh, it's been a really uh, exciting yes, show tonight. Baby, yeah, baby, yeah. Now he's getting well, winding down for the last half hour, so he's getting a bit of silly. But I want you to call in. And I have some really great things going on in my life. I want to do a segue here to cool off the room a minute, and then I'm going to let you take over, Rachel, and you can go wherever you want to go. Um, I have just been uh, kind of picked up by CEO Magazine. I will. I want to give a shout-out to, to uh, Sharon Oliver. And tell her thank you, thank you, thank you for loving up the Butterfly Queen. And um, I look forward to um, seeing me um, work with this magazine. It's, a, it's an awesome magazine. I want you to subscribe, and I'm going to speak a little bit more on it, but I will be writing for them and sharing my Butterfly Queen-isms. And we're going to talk about motivational pieces and just love, sex, and relationship and how to change the planet and make love hot again. Make it exciting again, you know, bringing back chivalry and how to make better marriages, how to make better connects on this planet. And that's what the Butterfly Queen After Dark Radio Show is. We're classy, never trashy, and it's my goal to empower us all to live better, love better, and laugh more. So that's what we are about. So now um, back to our conversation. We found out that Phil likes rug burn and sunburn. And, Rachel, what other questions did you want to interrogate our sexy guest on? You, you know, I really I work very hard to be PC and ask questions in a nature that do not offend our guests, but also answer the questions that are being thrown at me from these women. I don't okay. know where these women are coming from. But there's a All question right. here. I don't know exactly how to ask. Um, it has. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll just say to Phil that it has something to do with the preference of hair. Right. And uh, and I don't mean the hair on uh, right. a woman's um, head. Uh-huh. Um, do we prefer um, 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 hairless chihuahuas? Or mm. do we? like um, a fuller um, experience with lots of hair. Okay, you're not going to answer that yet. We're going to take a break. Okay. And cool it off the hair for a minute. Then we're going to go back to your questions. Rachel, i got to talk to you in the back room. Just get me back. <laughs> get me back right now. It's time for a break. We have to go pay the bills. <laughs> Hi, this is Simone Bow of Life Success Principles in Nassau, Bahamas. And I listen to the Ultimate International Business Experience radio show on iHeartRadio. And you should, too. Hi, this is Sylvester Green of Building United Communities here in London, England. And I listen to the Ultimate International Business Experience radio show on iHeartRadio. And you should, too. Before you come to any conclusions, allow me to tell you a short story. I'm a result of a Vietnam War, actually, the secret war in Laos, a bastard son of an American soldier. Get ready to embrace the true story from author Bruce King about shattered dreams, abandoned hopes, and the children who came from it all. Orphans of a Secret War is available for purchase on Amazon.com. In the early 70s, when sex drugs, and rock and roll was the theme, read about how lives were being changed and left behind. Orphans of a Secret War. Get your digital copy from Amazon.com today.
brought to you by on the May We Help You Radio Network. Only on the May We Help You Radio Network. Only on the May We Help You Radio Network. Only on the May We Help You Radio Network. Only on the May We Help You Radio Network. Only on May We Help You Radio Network. So on the May We Help You Radio Network. MWHY Radio Network. May We Help You Radio. On the May We Help You Radio Network. Only on the May We Help You Radio Broadcast Network, the network that helps you. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Butterfly Queen After Dark Show. I'm here live with Philip Michael Thomas, Jr. and my writer, Dr. Chick, Rachel Sakiafa. And I want to say a very big thank you for his music tonight, music provided by Philip Michael Thomas, Jr. And later in the show, he's going to tell you where you can download his hot sounds and um, kind of follow him on social media and just enjoy as I do. And um, I hope you didn't miss the song Queen, Queen of Love Land. That's that's it for me. I'm claiming it. So thank you, thank you very much. Tonight's show, Love Lessons, we're talking about how to get the love that you want. And we're just having a general comfortable conversation and um, giving some tidbits on how to command what it is you want. In the beginning of the show, I first talked about loving ourselves, taking time for ourselves, and, and, you know, so that you can kind of get yourself ready for love. Um, I always like to smell good. I like to take time dressing to look as best I can. And recently, my queen sister celebrated a birthday. I had an amazing time. My birthday night was just a dream. You know, I got to spend it with some really great people, and I had a wonderful night. And um, when I came home, my queen sisters treated me to a massage. And a part of, you know, really preparing yourself for love and knowing how to love is loving yourself. So take your time to get a massage. And I want to bring uh, this queen on who has the most magical hands in the world. Yes, we're taking a little segue, you know, a little juicy stuff, but her name is Carell Jenkins, and she is a traveling masseuse here, or um, massage therapist here in Richmond, Virginia, and I want you to um, kind of hear what she has taking care of ourselves, ladies. Hi, darling. Welcome to the Butterfly Queen After Dark Show. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm sorry. Hey. We didn't wait so long, darling. We didn't have a good time. <laughs> okay. Philip Michael I Thomas, love your Jr. Name. Isn't your her name, name Thank you. <laughs> And it has a little accent over it. It's just a beautiful name. <laughs> and guess what? She's a Jersey girl. She's a Jersey girl from my home. Oh, uh, yes, town, ma'am. Jersey. Yes. And uh, come to find out, we talked, and we lived not too far apart. So, Carell, mm. I know you're married, and I know yes, you have ma'am. the most magical fingers on the planet. And <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> girl, 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 girl. Uh, it was absolutely wonderful. And I want to thank my queen, Sister Jeanette, for treating me so well. And, you know, part of, like I said, of getting what you want in a relationship is knowing how to take care of yourself first. And the most beautiful thing, what I like, I like to be massaged and I like to give massages. And you give lessons on how to do that, don't you? I do. I do, amongst other things, but I do. 
Okay, I want my love to know that I'm in practice and you're going to teach me how to do all the things I need to do, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, Queen, how long have you been studying this art of um, massage therapy? And tell me quickly some of the benefits of it. There's, well, there's a lot of benefits to massage therapy. Um, but, the, you know, depending upon certain people's physical condition, it's it's just therapeutic, and for others, it's basically like a physical medicine. Um, I mean, you know, for those who might have had trauma, you know, past trauma, car accidents, uh, injury, you know, it's certain um, certain situations that where you need massage because you need a relief. You need, you know, and it can it can take the place of medicine, you know, uh, medication right. and everything, but. Um, and it's just amazing. It's amazing. I mean, you'd be surprised. Just touch itself. When I was in school, just, I mean, you you know, you would think, oh, massage, uh, people probably get kinky firsthand, like, oh, uh, I want to be touched here. But you would be amazed at how good a hand <laughs> massage or an, or an arm massage feels. <laughs> well, I know that you did a great job on me. And um, I like a rock massage, too. No, I think it's mm-hmm. really important between partners to know how mm-hmm. and where to touch and how to touch. So that's important. And um, we talked about, like, I had a divorce pain when um, I met Terrell. And I just, you know, I was so excited about being treated uh, to this massage. She came to the house. She had an amazing table. You turned the lights down, and I think I snored a couple times. <laughs> I was so relaxed. I was so relaxed. And the first thing I thought was, you know, I would like to give this gift to my partner. I would like to give this gift to, you know, to the man in my life. I'd like to give this gift to the, to you know, to just everybody. Everyone needs to feel good, you know. Right. And then you and I, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and you and I talked about, you know, some people, they get them daily. They get daily massages. Mm-hmm. 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 And you, you would be so surprised. So, Terrell, you made me feel amazing, and you said that they have many therapeutic values and uh, to getting massage, and they also have some erotic value to them. So where can we reach you? Where can we reach you? <laughs> well, um, I can give uh, – I don't – I guess I can give my number because it's not like I have a website where you can okay. you know, contact me. Um, okay. So, I, you know, I can give my number, of course, Um well, because you know, are, because go ahead. You do work out of the RVA flea market as well, right? I do. Okay, so let's tell them that instead of giving out your number because you saw people just call you now. So right, uh, yeah, I know, no right? Stalkers. I was. Yeah, you don't need no stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, you wanna, I'm so wanna, serious. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Let's ask them to come visit you on Midlothian mm-hmm. Turnpike at the RVA yes. flea market, and her name is yes, Carell Jenkins. And she's awesome. And we're going to get her a Google number so you can reach her. And I promise the next time uh, we are on the air, we will have a Google number where people can reach you because you have magical hands. And um, I really want everyone to have opportunity to enjoy this. So part of cultivating what it is you want in your life. Not, and the Butterfly Queen always likes to shout out local talents and, and things that I come across that are just wonderful. They help you to live better, love better, and laugh more. And I know I was laughing more the next day, and um, oh I, was, I was living a lot better. I'm almost I don't know, I could love better, but I'm still a little stiff. But um, <laughs> it was, <laughs> but it was awesome. It was awesome. So Carell Jenkins at the RVA Flea Market on Midlothian Turnpike. All of us who are in Richmond know where it is, and I'm going to have a special number for her. We're going to get this lady out here. But um, yeah. sweetheart, thank you. Anything you like? Did you like to add? Um, no, I, I mean, when y'all were going, I was on, you know, I was here the whole time. I don't know. I just didn't know what button to push, but y'all were killing me. I was here on the other end, like, oh my God, I want to, you know, <laughs> you was like, and I don't want to leave the married folks out and I like to smell good. I'm like, me too. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, I'm glad, I was I'm having glad a thing. stick yeah. over here. I can imagine a stick. you doing in the clients, you but, need them to smell, you know, and be clean. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you, and thank a lot you of for people calling don't in. know about that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, have good hygiene before you come on my table, right? <laughs> right, that's well, what I, you expect. 
But yeah. I love to smell good. I think smelling good is really, really important. I love a man that smells good. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I'm getting yeah. caught in the moment. Right. I am really getting you caught in the moment. Say, you should say that's the requirements before you get on the table. Yeah, so I require oh, that's before you a take, take a nice shower. <laughs> Just say, take a nice hot shower so you can be relaxed, you know what I'm saying, to help you right. more relaxed. You know what I'm saying? Right. Before you come right. to take a nice hot shower, you feel me? What? So you well, relax. Well, I, I want to thank you for calling in. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, every I show, did. every month is very, very different. But I'm so glad you called in. We hope that, you know, after listening to the Butterfly Queen, we give you a few tips to live better, love better, laugh more. At the very least, I want you to be able to say, exactly what is you want and never settle for anything less than butterflies. So, sweetheart, thank you for calling in, and we're going to get you out there. And I'm coming to see you. Don't forget my appointment. We wrote that down, right? Yes, ma'am. I have you. Ah. All right. Don't don't look anybody else. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thanks for calling in. Okay. All right, my king and queen, let's get back to the conversation. I was hoping Jerome J. Hill Jr. called in to add, because ladies are asking for him in my chat, is that Jerome? Where's Jerome? But um, hopefully he will be back on future shows if he's not here tonight. Uh, you know, he is a very busy man, but um, he is always there for me when I need him. So uh, I will give him your messages, ladies, and let him know. Uh, Marie out there in Florida who's calling for Jerome and Renee and um, all of you all, I will personally give a message from you to him. So. Back to what we Rachel, go ahead. You can ask your question. I think it has something to do with hair or, or not hair. I, come on. I did. I did. And I'm going to back off of my question because it may not be very appropriate for tonight. So, And I don't well, want to embarrass Phil too much because the Phil knew what I was going to ask him. He knew exactly what I was asking because he's a grown a man. He knows what I was asking him. <laughs> well, yeah, Phil... Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Let's go back to the subject of getting the love or uh, 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 cultivating the love it is that you want. So, Phil, if there's a woman yeah, out ma'am. there that you really love, what are some of the things that you would do to, um, you know, kind of get her to come to you? I mean, men are pursuers. Yes, you are. And you're natural born hunters. But what is it you do to cultivate exactly what it is you want from a person to make them feel comfortable with you? Enough right. to, you know, open up and be their authentic selves. Um, you know, uh, for the conversation definitely um, nothing too heavy at first. You know, it, are we talking about the beginning or are we talking about like wherever recording? you want to start, baby? Okay, let's say okay, we start by courting. If I find, you know, one that I'm really attracted to, and I feel like we could, um, you know, be something cool. I like to get away somewhere we can just go, kind of sit and talk about you know, different things we got going on and just find out where her mind is, like what she's doing, um, you know, whether or not she's somebody that feels like, you know, she's uh, she's on the right path or she's searching to find that right path. Um, right. Honestly, like, 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 you know, we've been talking this whole conversation, you know, keeping it honest and truthful and just honestly saying, like, you know, what she wants, like, out of life right now. Because one thing I don't want to do is waste time. You know, if I've learned that, mm-hmm. especially um, mm-hmm. dealing with women, you know, women, you know, y'all are some very amazing creatures that, uh, you know, should be held to the utmost, especially with respect and, and, um, and just, you know, it's not cool to play with a girl's heart. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and, you know, and you don't try to play with a girl's heart, but, you know, sometimes jumping to conclusion about certain things when there's a miscommunication, that can happen, you know? So um, I feel like just, open up the lines of communication and really kind of just, you know, really get to know each other for real, like aside from all, like, the other stuff, you know. And that that's like if if, if that dealing with, you know, like if I feel like it's somebody that I can really vibe with, you know what I'm saying, I want to open it up and be like, yo, be as open and honest as possible because it's like, man, I'll, you know, I, the thing I talk about a lot, um, especially at some of the shows, like, I, you know, I talk about, like, I, I'm a big, like, Kid, I'm, I'm like I love I loved everything about high school. You know what I'm saying? I loved everything mm-hmm. about, um, you know, even being in college. Like it's, it's fun being around, you know, people that, you know, you could really like see who, who they are outside of their representative. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like you know, you, you, of course you guys first meet and everybody's like oh, just trying to feel each other out. But then you know, through time, like you just being around somebody, you know their habits. You know, you know. Um, 
you know, ways about them. And so it's like if um if we can get that popping from the jump where we could just, you know, really kinda let loose, then you know, yes. that's uh that's that's success for me. Okay. Right. You know, All I right. think that I, I think back when we were in college, we were like in a kind of a um you know, in a close setting. You know, you got to see the same yeah. people every day. You didn't yeah. have to text them, you know, you, you got to see them, you know, you got to talk to them and you got to socialize and usually people who are in college are, you know, you know, of the like of the same mindset. You're you you're working towards a goal, uh, you're there for a purpose. Most people are there. Right. And um so that gives you a commonality there. And I think now when you get to my age where we're not in those close settings all the time and I work from home and I travel a lot, you know, I don't often get the time to kinda of observe someone and get to, you know, really talk to them. So when I meet a person and we just vibe, it, it's just amazing to me. You know, and they get to know who I really am as a person. That's really important. We have a caller on. We're getting so before I let, before I go any further, I want you to tell people where we can get your music. And, sure, um, you can get my. Uh-huh. You can start. Right, um, sure. we, <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> let me dance it. <laughs> let the man talk. Yeah. There you go. Right. Go ahead. You can um you know you can find me um I am Googleable. Uh, Philip Michael Thomas Jr. Uh, my website is philipmichaelthomasjr. dot com. On there, that can lead you to everything from iTunes, uh, Pandora, Spotify, my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the social media sites that everybody keeps up with. Philip Michael Thomas Jr. dot com. Um, I be wilding on my social media, so I'm just saying anybody. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Y'all looking at follow me with her. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cool, chill. Like, I'm trying to, you know, keep it together right now on the phone because out of respect, you know, for the queens. However, like, I do turn up, you know what I'm saying, on my social media. So please don't feel offended. No way. You know what I'm saying? I just, it's all in jokes and it's all in fun. You know, you see it on my social, social media, media, I'm posting music and, and, I enjoy music and like, just watching. funny shit. I mean, funny stuff. Yeah. Oh. Well, I enjoy you. I do. And like I said, you know, I'm a forever fan and our connect was real, and it's so funny. I mean, you know, we're not romantically involved, darn it. But, you know, when I first met you, we, we set up all night, we talked forever, you know. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, really enjoyed you. I want you to do me a favor. Rachel, I'm going to let you say one half a question real quick, but we got uh, I'm going to allow Phil to set up your last song, and tell me a little bit about your song, and this is what I had you on here for tonight, because I want to showcase just how amazing you are, and you smell good, too, and we talk uh, all the time while you're on the road, and I love you, love you so much. These two hours go really, really fast. You know, they really, really do. We don't get to cover everything we're going to cover, but I think we did pretty good tonight, considering you. You did a great job, the too. wasn't feeling always, too great. Yeah, always a pleasure with y'all, man. All right, um, please, um, Rachel, one last question, and then I'm going to let Phil set No, I was, I was just going to remind Phil that he knows where I keep the key outside the house, and he can be brief with his boxers when it comes to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. So I just wanted to remind him. I know it's been a minute. You know, and you may not want everybody in America to know about us, but, hey, baby, I think you're unforgettable. Yes, yes. Hey. <laughs> well, this is the Butterfly Queen. I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. I'm going to let Phil take us out of here, give us a setup for his last song. And yes. just remember, you deserve, you deserve the very, very best in life. And I don't want you to ever, ever settle for anything less than your heart's desire. Know that you are enough and the universe will accommodate you. And kings, I love you, love you, love you. Queens, I adore you, I adore you, I adore you so very, very much. Thanks for listening to the Butterfly Queen After Dark Show. And Phil, yes. I want you to do your thing, baby. And also, never, ever settle for anything less than butterflies. And remember, Amen. ask for what you want. And you Amen. shall receive it. Phil, give us a second for your song. All right. Hey, y'all, this is Philip Michael on the line with the Butterfly Queen and this beautiful Rachel. Um, this new song that we're about to premiere is actually a song from my upcoming album, Miami Is My Vice, coming out soon, sooner than later. It's called There's Only One You. It's a song about when you're dealing with that special someone 
and no matter how many others are kind of coming in between y'all, they're trying to get in between y'all, you only have eyes for that one person, and you let them know it by telling them there's only one you. So if you can just go ahead and take that away, I hope y'all enjoy it. Jimmy John's. I didn't order a Jimmy John's sandwich. I know, but you probably have ordered a Jimmy John's sandwich, right? Of course I have. You're freaky fast. Okay, well then thanks. What? Thanks for choosing Jimmy John's. Okay, you're welcome. But why me? Jimmy John's wants to thank all our wonderful customers. They're all 2,300 Jimmy John's locations across America. Well, what if I didn't happen to be a Jimmy John's customer? Then I would thank you anticipatorily for your future Jimmy John's patronage. Anticipatory? What? It means in advance, sir. So you plan to personally thank everyone in every town where there's a Jimmy John's? <laughs> Don't be silly, sir. <laughs> didn't think so. My boss will be covering the other side of the street. How's it going, boss? I two houses ahead of you. Oops, gotta run.